This story just broke on, uh, or is out right now on Variety Magazine's website. And basically the story is this, is as we all know, J.J. Abrams is not going to be directing Star Trek III because he's obviously busy with some other little sci-fi movie adventure mm -hmm. that I can't remember which. Um, so he's going to be working on that. So the question has been, who will be directing it? There was some talk that the guy from Attack the Block made directing it. That kind of rumor kind of came and went. Um, but now what is being reported is that Roberta Orsi of the writing team, uh, uh, Kurtzman and Orsi, who is writing the film and has written a lot of stuff, uh, and was actually, oh, there, he, there is Roberta Orsi who actually dropped into our AMC Movie Talk meet and greet uh, at Comic-Con last year, which was pretty cool of him. Um, the report is right now that he is lobbying pretty hard to actually direct Star Trek III. And the report claims that uh, both Skydance and J.J. Abrams and Bad Robot, J.J. is still producing Star Trek III, are actually totally all for it, and they want him to direct it. But according to the report, Paramount is just being cautious about it. They're, they're a little bit hesitant about it. This is interesting, because if Orsi ends up directing Star Trek III, this will be his first film that he's directed. And while I love the idea of new upcoming directors getting their first shot, I've always been very hesitant about giving a new director a big major tentpole huge budget film as his first film. Right. And that's certainly in play here. It would be Roberta's first, first motion picture. I don't know if Star Trek is the right grounds for that. Now, having said that, on the other side of that coin, are you going to find somebody more familiar with this Star Trek universe? This guy wrote the first two films. I mean, he's writing the third film. He's intimately knowledgeable about the inner workings of it. He's worked alongside J.J. Abrams. He knows this world. So in some ways, that kind of makes him ideal hmm. to direct Star Trek III. I'm not sure how I feel about this because I just right. heard this news because I got those two contra contrasting feelings, right? He knows this world completely well. He's the one writing it. But at the same time, do you let a guy direct his first motion picture on a huge tentpole project like this? I, I still don't know how I feel about it. Schnepp, right. you heard this just a few minutes ago, like me. Yeah. What's your initial reaction? Well, it's weird. My initial reaction is very similar to yours. I mean, in the negative spot, I think Wally Pfister and Transcendence, someone who's been in the motion picture industry for you know over a decade now, being a DP, working and shooting these movies, and then he gets his first feature film, a giant hundred million dollar movie. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I can't actually make my own call on it. But every critic that I've, I've any of the, the, the I, it's all negative view reviews. The film didn't do well at the box office, so uh, that happens with first time directors sometimes on a giant budget. So right. uh, in the positive spot, he is the guy who, who did the relaunch of Star Trek and the sequel, which I liked. Uh, a lot of people hated the, you know, Into I Darkness. Really but, yeah, Into Darkness. I really liked Into Darkness. I think it. you did too, right? Yeah. Like, we both really liked Into um, Darkness. And uh, so to me, it's like he's the yeah ideal person because he's there. And he was there, I'm sure, during the shoots for the first two, you know? So he's like, it's not like he was directing the film, but he was there overseeing it. He did write it. I'm sure he was there on every storyboarding session and rewriting session. So um, ideally, whether or not he's the best visualist, as a director, that's obviously unknown because he's never directed anything right. before ever. So that kind of puts me in a, in a in a strange spot. I mean, as a director who's friends with tons of writers who are also writer directors, and also just writers who I know want to direct. It's it's that constant struggle where you're like, if I I for personally feel like if the director or the writer has a vision of like how they'd want to see it play out, like I'm sure or Orky probably is it Orsi Orsi yeah Orsi. I'm sure he has some kind of a vision, and that's why the rest of his team is like, look, he can visually play it out. He knows all the actors, so I'd be for it, I think. I'd say give him the shot. Uh, if you were going to gamble, I'd gamble with him of anybody, unknown directors to take over from J.J. Why not the guy who's worked with J.J. rebuilding this entire franchise? Yeah, and it should be noted, too, that in this writing partner of Kurtzman and Orsi, Kurtzman has directed uh, one or two other things, granted some smaller things, and he's actually done a nice little job on his own. I believe Kurtzman has also been lined up to direct the Venom Spider-Man spinoff film as well. Okay. So uh, that worked out well. Still, it just makes me a little bit nervous. First time, probably $130, $150 million 
Right. Try to, uh. Hey everyone, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.